Little Vi returned with tickets, but her thin lips were pursed with worry. There is no elevator, she said. I am very, very sorry. It's okay, I said. No, there are many stairs, she said. Steep stairs. It's okay, I said again. I was just started to say something, but I interrupted. It's okay, I can do it. We began in a room with a video about Jews in Holland and the, Na and the Nazi invasion in the Frank family. Then we walked upstairs into the canal house where all the Frank's business happened. The stairs were slow. For me and Augustus both, but I felt strong. Soon I was staring at the famous bookcase that had hid Anne Frank, her family, and four others. The bookcase was half open, and behind it was an even steeper set of stairs, only wide enough for one person. There were fellow visitors all around us, and I didn't want to hold up the procession, but little by said, If everyone could be patient, please. And I began to walk up. Little by carrying the cart behind me, Gus behind her. It was 14 steps. I kept thinking about the people behind me. They were mostly adults speaking a variety of languages and feeling embarrassed or whatever. Feeling like a ghost that both comforts and haunts. But finally I made it up. And, even, and then I was in an early empty room, leaning against the wall. My brain telling my lungs, it's okay, it's okay, calm down, it's okay. And my lungs telling my brain, oh god, we're dying here. I didn't even see Augustus come upstairs. But he came over and wiped his brow with the back of his hand, like who? And said, you're a champion. After a few minutes of wall leaning, I made it to the next room, which Anne had shared with the dentist, Rich Pepper. It was tiny, empty of all furniture. You'd never know anyone had ever lived there except that the pictures Anne had pasted onto the wall from magazines and newspapers were still there. Another, stair another staircase led up to the room where the Van Pels family had lived. This one steeper than the last and 18 steps, essentially a glorified ladder. I got to the threshold and looked up and figured I could not do it, but also knew the, the only way through was up. Let's go back, Gus said behind me. I'm okay. I answered quietly. It's stupid, but I kept thinking I owed it to her, to Anne Frank, I mean, because she was bad enough that and I wasn't, because she had stayed quiet and kept the blinds drawn and done everything right and still died. And so I should go up the, go up the steps and see the rest of the world she'd lived in those years before the Gestapo came. I began to climb the stairs, crawling up them like a little kid would, slowly at first so I could breathe. But then, faster because I knew I couldn't breathe and wanted to get to the top before everything gave up. The blackness encroached around my field of vision as I pulled myself up. 18 steps, steep as hell. I finally crafted the staircase, mostly blind and nauseate, nauseated. The muscles in my arms and legs screaming for oxygen. I slumped seated against the wall, having watered down cuffs. There were an empty glass case bolted to the wall above me and I started up through it to the ceiling and tried not to pass out. Little by crouched down next to me, saying, You're at the top, that is it. And I noted. I had a vague awareness of the of the adults all all around glancing down at me worriedly of little by speaking quietly in one language and then another and then another to various visitors, of Augustus standing above me, his hand on the top of my head, stroking my hair along the part. After a long time, little by and Augustus pulled me, pulled me to my feet and I, and I saw what was protected by the glass case, 
Pencil and marks on the log paper measuring the growth of all the children in the an in the annex during the period they lived there, inch after inch until they would grow no more. From there, we left the Frank's living area, but we, will, we were still in the museum. A long narrow hallway showed pictures of each of the annexes, eight residents, and described how and where and when they died. The only member of his full family who survived, was, who survived the war, little by told us, in referring to Anne's father, Otto. Her voice was hushed like we were in church. But he didn't survive a war, not really. Augustus said he survived a genocide. True, little by said, I do not know how you go on without your family, I do not know. As I read about each of the seven who died, I thought of Otto Frank not being a father anymore, left with a diary instead of a wife and two daughters. At the end of the hallway, a huge book, bigger than a dictionary, contained the names of the 103,000 dead from the Netherlands in the Holocaust. Only 5,000 of the deported, deported Dutch Jews, a wall label explained, had survived. 5,000 auto francs. The book was turned to the page with Anne Frank's name, but what got me about it was the fact that right beneath her name there were four Aaron Franks. Four. Four Aaron Franks without museums, without historical markers, without anyone to mourn them. I silently reserved, reserved to remember and pray for the four Aaron Franks as long as I was around. Maybe some people need to believe in a proper and om omnip omnipotent God to pray. But I don't. As we got to the end of the room, God stopped and said, You okay? I nodded. He gestured back toward Anne's picture. The worst part is that she almost lived, you know? She died weeks away from liberation. Little by took a few steps aw away to watch a video and I grabbed Augustus's hand as he walked into the next room. It was an A-frame room with some letters Otto Frank had written to people during his months-long search for his daughters. On the wall in the middle of the room, a video of Otto Frank played. He was speaking in English. Are there any Natchez left, left that, I could hum, that I could hunt down and bring to justice? 